I was born in Norway, uh, born in Oslo. I was very fortunate as a young boy. When I started skiing, I had six pairs of skis when I was 11 years old. And that's not normal. When I started to ride motocross, I had three bikes. If I wanted something, I, I, I got it. I had the opportunity to, to do everything I, I always wanted in that way and to do it in a professional way. One day I tried a rally car on a frozen lake. After one week of driving, the Norwegian champion of rally was up there. And I remember we drive the same car around and I was already beating him after one week of driving and I was only 16 years old. And then we thought, okay, maybe I have a chance and opportunity in this sport to do well. So let's try it. I don't think we have seen the, the biggest talents. I'm sure he's out there somewhere without the opportunity. I wish money was never a problem but it, it will never be like that in, in motorsports. You need millions of euros to do it. In 2008, my father told me that he didn't have the opportunity anymore. That was the first time I really understood how, how lucky I was. That time I had no car, I had no team. My manager and friend, Eric, came into my life when I lost my opportunity in 2008. He came and told me that you know, I, I really want to help you, but I don't want to support you in the way that you've been doing the sport so far, by buying you the best cars and everything. I will support you, but then we do it my way. Starting over, win the heart of the Norwegian rally people. Go back to the most basic rally cars you can find, try to beat everyone, and then we can start playing. And that's exactly what we did. I know when I got the best cars, a lot of people were saying, he has the best cars, that's the reason why he's winning. When I took that step down and started with cars that everybody drove, everybody was talking about me differently. Suddenly I was a, a real talent. Rally Larvik was the only rally of the Norwegian Championship, which is on tarmac. At the time, I, I drove a, a Subaru Group N car. It's like a really light spec. I, I came over this left-hand corner of our crest. The car lifted and we were off the air. And when we landed, it was straight into a, a left-hand turn. Really bad accident. I heard a lot of screaming. And I got this really, really bad feeling inside me. The situation happened that I, I basically hit a spectator when I, when I went off the road. It was a young girl, and uh, tragically she died. I went into this defense mode where I just blocked everything out. I felt like, like we didn't have an accident. It was like a bad dream, or it was like, this is not happening. And my co-driver took me on to a, a different place where I can just stay for myself a little bit while he fixes the situation. And my co-driver came over to me and said, Andres, uh, the little girl's mom wants to talk to you. She's, uh, she is waiting for you in the ambulance. I felt okay. I didn't know what, what she would do. I expected her to beat me up. But, you know, coming into that ambulance, she came over to me and she gave me the world's biggest hug. And the words she told me then in the ambulance, that's the reason why I'm sitting here today, why I'm still driving. Going to the funeral was... Um, not easy. I remember coming there and it was so many people there. It was not even enough room for everyone inside the, the church. And when we came out, the whole cemetery was almost full of people. But in one way, it was a beautiful thing to see as well. How closely we all stand together when we, when we face something really difficult. After that, I got more and more contact with the father. They really tried to get me back into that rally car because at the time I'm not sure if I would just even risk the same thing happening again. In 
2011, when I got my Skoda contract, my first time ever driving for a big manufacturer, I wanted to prove to the world how fast I was. In the beginning of the season, I did a lot of mistakes. I drove off the start line of Rally Monte Carlo. I crashed after 500 meters. Okay, I finished the next race, but then I crashed again. Skoda was not very happy. I think I was very close to losing my international rally career. Coming into Rally Azores after a string of really bad results, I was not feeling good at all. Drivers like Thierry Neville and Ivo Hannan, who was my main rivals, they are driving extremely fast, so I knew I need to be on my best to, to beat them. In the beginning, you know, we were straight on the pace. We come into the second stage. I'm having a really nice stage. While I'm driving downhill, it's a lot of hairpins, really tight corners. And I feel that the, the steering is getting quite heavy. It's not like a normal car without power steering. This is much, much worse. I managed the stage with only losing around 10 seconds, I think. So it's still possible to, to climb back. For me, it was time to look at the overall picture. Normally, I, I don't collect second places, but that, that's a special one because I was struggling so much. Second or two to take his helmet off. Andreas, what a weekend. It's been a great battle between yourself and Juho Hannan. Six stage wins and perilously close to your first win. Second place, it's a great result. Yeah, second place is, uh, is very good. You know, the whole team has done a fantastic job all weekend. At that time, to have a score down first, second and third place was a big achievement for them. So to risk to lose a car, trying to fight inside the team, I found out that would be a little bit stupid, so I'm not driving for myself anymore. And realizing that is a turning point for myself as a driver. After that rally, I started to win rallies. I like to think that uh, that the car is is not only a machine. It's it's something that you know you need to have a, a special connection with. Um, even though all the cars are the same, I, I have my favorite one. It's the feeling you get when you sit in them. Um, and okay, some cars you have good results with. And okay, maybe it's a bit superstitious, but. I like to think it a little bit like that. When I won the IRC championship for the first time, the last couple of stages, I, I heard so many noises from the car. I was just so afraid that anything could go wrong. And then I started talking to the car, you know, come on, <laughs> don't let anything happen to us now. <laughs> and uh, and uh, she treated me well, no problems. And we got to the finish and uh, she did a good job. Andreas, congratulations, you're the champion for this season. <laughs> oh my God, I could never believe that this would happen coming into this. Of course, it was a big dream, but what a year. It started off in Monte Carlo, not so good, and we ended up here as the winners. I don't know what to say, it's oh, so much energy behind this one. The whole team, everyone around me, it's very emotional right now. I was the, at that point of my career where I felt I won now the IRC two years in a row with Skoda. And I wanted a new challenge. I want something bigger. And then at the same time, Volkswagen came in. 
and it was a perfect opportunity for me and also for Volkswagen they have the, exactly the same goals as me they want to be the best as soon as possible they are not making a car to be second they are making a car to win and luckily I drive that car I think we're on the right track I think we have showed a progression already this year which is uh, quite amazing winning stage is already on my third rally I have a, a big goal uh, and that is to be world champion. This year I want a podium. I feel it's really possible this year. Next year I want to fight for, uh, for rallies, so that means in the 2014 season fight for rally wins. In 2015 I want to win the championship, so we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs>